o'clock, so let's get started. Um, my name is Sandy Golding, and I'm president of Beaches Watch. I want to welcome you all for coming tonight. Uh, for those of you who may not know about Beaches Watch, we are a citizens group, a nonprofit citizens group that was formed in 2004. And our members are Atlantic Beach, Neptune Beach, and Jack's Beach. And our focus is to um, to facilitate and encourage citizen participation in the decisions that are being made in our beaches communities. So um, tonight, and we have these meetings uh, the first Wednesday of every month. I hope everybody picked up an agenda when you came in because we have some information on here that we want to make sure you go home with. Before we get started, let me introduce um, the elected officials we have that are here tonight. We have Atlantic Beach Mayor Mike Mordo. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor, for being here. We also have from Atlantic Beach Jonathan Doherty. Jonathan, where'd you go? He stepped outside. And Anne Maria Mark. Thank you for being here tonight. And then from at Neptune Beach, we have Mayor Harriet Pruitt. And and then we also have our distinguished guest. Where did he go? He's hiding. Oh, he just ran out the door. Okay. Um, Councilman Gulliford, yeah, I'll, get the water. I'll introduce him in just a minute. Yeah. Um, but before we get started, there's a few things I want to mention. Um, Beaches Watch is 2013. Our memberships run from January to December. So it's time to renew your membership. It's only $10 for individual, $15 for family. Oh, thank you, Andy. We're so glad that you're official now. And um, so if you haven't renewed or you would like to join, Eileen is at the table right there, and she's our membership director. She'll be glad to take care of your membership. Also, I want to let everybody know that at the March 18th Jack Speech City Council meeting, because some people are interested in this, and so we wanted to put this on here, uh, Jack Speech is going to be discussing the suspension of, of the paid parking program. So for anybody who's interested in that, uh, that'll be Monday, March 18th at 7 p.m. in the Jack Speech Council Chambers. Um, for anybody who is interested in following some of the state legislative um, session progress, we've got information here about the websites that you can go to to sign up for, uh, to track bills and that sort of thing. Uh, also, Thousand Friends of Florida is another organization that does a really good job of uh, monitoring the growth management type um, issues that go before the, the House and the Senate in Tallahassee. So we've got that information there as well. And then next month, instead of our monthly meeting, we're going to have our <coughs> member guest social, which this is our third or fourth year to do this, and it's a lot of fun. So I hope that you will plan to come. It's for members, and members bring a guest, and we will have free food. We'll have raffle prizes. We always have a lot of raffle, pri raffle prizes, and so you always have a lot of chances to win some really nice things donated by Beaches Businesses, which is really, which is really wonderful. So we hope you plan to come. It's April 3rd from 6 to 8 at the um, Heroes 19 Hole restaurant at the Jack's Beach Municipal Golf Course, and it's a lot of fun. So need to come. RSVP to the email address or give us a call at this phone number and we hope to see you all there. Um, if you haven't joined or haven't renewed your membership, you can do it there or you can do it tonight and then you're good to go. The other thing is it's time for us to do our Friend of the Beaches Award nominations. Um, this is an award that we give out every year and it's uh, recognizing individuals, businesses, or organizations um, in the community that are doing something to contribute to the uh, quality of life at our beaches. Uh, whatever it may be, we want people to nominate individuals, businesses, or organizations, and then we will recognize them as a friend of the beach. Um, last year, our recipient was the um, Save the Ferry organization because they were really doing some great work and making a lot of uh, great progress in saving the ferry. And so they were the perfect recipient last year. We've had a lot of great recipients. So please um, email us your nominations because we really want to recognize the good things that are going on in our community. So now with, um, without any other, uh, uh, does anybody else have any announcements real quick that Yes, I just have a couple. As far as um, legislative, you can also go to the Florida League of Cities, their website.
like because they have a very comprehensive list of uh, really things that they're concerned about, but it, it really that affect like municipalities. municipalities. Okay. Um, so four of the cities, and then Atlantic Beach, we're holding our um, series of strategic planning workshops next week, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, starting at five o'clock at the Del Rage, and of course the public is invited to that. So. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure I put that in the newsletter and we'll get that out to everybody. But definitely, the League of Cities, she's right, the League of Cities information is really great for the legislative session. Um, they're really good at providing a lot of good information about what may affect our municipalities. And so, that I'll find that, if you could send me that website or whatever, sure. I'll get that out in the newsletter to you. Okay, yes, John. Hey, tomorrow at 6 o'clock at Atlantic Beach Elementary, uh, there's a meeting, uh, it's a uh, part of a great application that Atlantic Beach has uh, for Safe Cross to School. Um, and part of that we have to show community support and things like that. And what we're doing is we found a $750,000 grant. We'll put a bike path the entire length of Atlantic Beach. Uh, it's 100% federally funded for that. So, um, you know, I think you'll see come out and learn about that. Six o'clock at Atlantic Beach Elementary, yeah. and it's and and is it for public input? Uh, well, for public input, um, any questions anybody has on it, because it will be a major uh, piece of Atlantic Beach. Okay. Um, so if anybody has any questions, concerns, um, ideas, etc. But uh, that's part of the part of the federal grant application program is you have to have a public meeting, get citizens involved. Okay. And, there, and the nice thing is that Jonathan. Dalry is actually, he identified this great opportunity that's actually going through the development school system. Well, it, it goes yeah. through the DOT, um, okay. but the school system actually has to be more applied to it. So, so it's a big it's it's a it was a collaboration of, the, of, those, of those agencies, which we think is really great. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, Bell Lee is uh, signed on to be uh, the sponsor of yeah. Good, good. Okay, great. All right, any other announcements? Yes. Um, I've got some library petitions in the back. If anyone has them, if I haven't pestered anybody <laughs> here, we just, um, but I've got, I will be standing by them after the meeting. Okay. Like for you to come out. Okay, great. All right, so thank you all for your announcements. Um, now I'd like to introduce our Jacksonville City Councilman. Bill Gulliver, who's that's representing right. the beaches. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Bob right here. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it me because I fell off the bus very un ungracefully uh, in Montana several years ago and keep messing it up. So if you don't mind, I'm going to sit. What I'm going to do, though, when I sit is I'm going to expose the fact that my two socks don't match. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, my, it's not my fault, it's my wife. She's the one that puts the socks together. I have nothing to do with it. But I have to also confess that one morning I got up early in the morning, got dressed in the dark, and got to work and noticed that I had a black shoe and a brown shoe on it. So it's gone beyond just socks. That was my fault. She didn't put, she didn't put my shoes on. Uh, uh, Don't feel bad. You've got another pair just like them at home. That's right. <laughs> I, before I get started, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you some things uh, uh, about uh, that you may not know about uh, Sybil. And uh, she's she is uh, her name has been advanced to be on the library board. We don't have anybody from the beach on the library board, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to get somebody from the beach. And she would be a tremendous. <laughs> Some years back, when I did a closing, when her husband was practicing law, I went to his office for a closing, and after we were finished, he took me on a tour. He had the most magnificent collection of old maps dating back to so, 1700s, 1500s, 1500s. These were priceless things. And he had them all throughout his office. And he felt so strongly about this community that he donated those maps the city and they are in the library in case you don't didn't know that take a little bit of time and go up on the top floor and uh, and look at those maps they're incredible and what a great gesture that was so so there's an added reason that she needs to be on the library board because that kind of dedication needs to be 
recognized this plan. I hope they keep them away from those leaky windows. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think that's not, a problem. Nowhere close to the windows. <laughs> um, the, um, everybody's, been, at least everybody from Lane Beach, Neptune Beach, been well aware of the tipping fee issue and uh, where it is right now. We have, we, we have a solid waste committee that I've been chairing and uh, the last meeting I made the suggestion that, hey, there's a simple solution to this. If Jacksonville is charging their residents twelve eighty seven or whatever it is per month, uh, simply charge the two beach cities that per month per resident, let them build their residents, add whatever they need to onto the service, and, uh, and that solves the problem. Well, there's been, I think they had a meeting of staff today to, to discuss that and other options. Um, it, it sounds like it's an oversimplification, but I don't have any other great solutions to resolution other than what ultimately happens and everybody goes to court and I would much prefer that not to happen because it's an expense incurred of time and money and it would just be better to get the thing out of the way. Uh, in the interim, we had passed, passed legislation extending the contract of waste, uh, excuse me, yeah, waste pro, who also has a contract with Neptune Beach for the next two and a half, three years. And I added an amend amendment which passed with the legislation that should the city of Neptune Beach and the city of Jacksonville come to an agreement where they would collect, that Waste Pro's pen or, uh, contract with Neptune Beach would not be binding in the sense that there'd be any penalty for the, for the early termination of that contract. So, and, and I will do the same thing for Atlantic Beach if I get the opportunity because we're in the negotiations with advanced disposal on extending their term in the hopes we can get them to go to single stream recycling. Everybody know what single stream recycling is? Anybody know? Anybody not know? Okay. What single stream recycling is, it's happened in one of the three areas that we pick up in Jacksonville. It's simply this. Everything, basically everything dry goes in a big container, 96 gallon container, and, and your food waste goes into a smaller container, and all of that is recycled. Everything you put in it, there's no limitation all your plastics, all your paper, all your cardboard, all your cans, everything that you can think of that does other than food stuff goes into this container and it goes to a facility on the north side that's just been built by Republic. It's pretty incredible. And they, they pay us $41 a ton for everything that goes through their center. And the purpose of negotiating the extended contract with Waste Pro was to add them. Now two thirds of the city will be recycling and we want to get advanced on board and hopefully the beaches will be part of that too because it doesn't pay for recycling. Recycling is still subsidized but $41 a ton goes a long way and remember you're eliminating the, the, the additional tonnage in the landfill. That tonnage is not going to landfill obviously it's being recycled so it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a good thing. Uh, and, and I hope that we lastly about uh, about the tipping fee issue there. I, I think that there's going to be another staff meeting that I believe I'm going to be involved in. And the, the big issue here is when we get to fairness, what's, what Jacksonville wants at this point is, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take over the service as has been suggested, but we want you all to pay the past two years tipping fees. Well, my feeling is, okay, the two cities should do that as long as you pay us all those past 20 years of animal control fees you've never paid. No, because fairness goes both ways, right? It, and that's what I said in the Solid Waste Committee meeting. And so, I don't know where to go, but you know what my position is. That's pretty easy to figure. Um, and, and that addresses the whole issue of county services, because I noticed that Jacksonville Beach is talking about fireworks again. My feeling is, yeah, government Jacksonville has more responsibility as county government to do more things at the beach because of the recreation facility that we provide, namely the entire coastal area and, and all the amenities that go along with it, that that government, there, there should be more focus on them helping us out here at the beach. Um, there's an issue right now that I'm looking into with respect to what they're paying for lifeguard and beach cleaning. There was a, in, in the agreement, there was a, uh, a trigger, I think it goes up every 3% or 3% every year. I'm worried that it's not really covering the cost. I know the city manager in Neptune Beach said it's not. Um, when we get into some serious negotiations about tipping fees and resolving that, I want, to, I want to continue it into some other some serious negotiations about other things because just like I mentioned about July 4th, Dad Gummit and the sheriff better, either the sheriff better send some folks down here or we better get the governor to send in the National Guard because 
you know, one or the other. They, they, need, the, they need more than just what Jacksonville Beach Police Force can provide when you see the glut of people coming from west of the ditch to enjoy our beaches. And I'm, hey, I'm all for that. I'd love them to come out here. That's, that's part of the county, part of the city. But I think they have to pony up and pay for some of the cost of that, too. It shouldn't be a burden of the three beach community solely. Mayport. Uh, we're moving along a little bit on Mayport. It's a, it's a slow process. Our big problem, folks, is that the most valuable asset in Mayport, namely most of the waterfront, is controlled by the Port Authority, which they bought for a cruise terminal. And we're, we're uh, I have a meeting with the uh, chairman of the board of the Port Authority and, uh, and the acting CEO next week. Um, we're just going to try and figure a way that we can get them involved and, and, and give up that property so that we can get it developed. Because that's the essence. That, that's what takes Mayport to the next level and allows us an opportunity to really turn Mayport into something special. Which I think it, it's just, it is such an underutilized uh, uh, gym and potential. Can you equate it, uh, those of you that are old beach folks, remember the blight in downtown Jacksonville Beach? I mean, this is, this is just another example of something not happening yet, and once it happens, it's going to be really, really good. You can let your mind go, go crazy on that. We've got a fellow named Russo that has a school, and he's having a 95-foot schooner built that he would like to dock at Mayport and do all kinds of things, but he has, he has a marine school that teaches piloting and captaining vessels, and he's got a simulator, and it's really impressive, and he wants to move that out to Mayport. We've got a marine science center that's only used by for the for the teaching the kids, it could be expanded into an aquarium and, and a lot of other things that could attract people to the area. You could have restaurants, you could have shops, you got the ferry, you got the recreational area. It could just be a fantastic place, and we need to make it that. So we're working in that direction. Um, I keep, kept saying that unless there was a coup, it looks like come July 1st, I'm going to be the president of the council. Um, and thus far, well, because I've got, I've got uh, 13 or 14 signed letters saying that they, uh, they'll, they'll support me for president. So I think I've, I've gotten that. I'm kind of honored because uh, Elaine Brown was president and lives at the beach, but I'm the first member, uh, uh, the first uh, president to be that is from the beach district. And so that's quite an, uh, an honor for me to be able to do that. Will I use it to the advantage of, um, of the community? Absolutely, I'm going to <laughs> That's, that's, I'm going to make every user advantage of it. But I want to talk to you about a couple of things relative to Jacksonville. How many people in the room think that we have taken $9 million and put it towards downtown development by a show of hands? Nobody does? So you don't? You do. You think so, huh? Really? Why do you think so? That's what I read. You believe everything you read? You guys are looking for plans. Huh? Well, but the mayor is already making it sound like that we've already done something in the councils. I mean, we, but we haven't done much. Um, we, it's, it's passed. Yes, sir, Mr. Buck. Oh, go ahead, then. Okay, well, we, 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 uh, we passed it in, in, in uh, finance this week, and it'll go to full council next week. But let me explain what we did in finance. All we did was we put it in a restricted fund, and I offered an amendment to put it in council contingency instead of that fund. Uh, I got voted down, but that's not the first time that's happened. It seems to be about 1.20 in the morning, I got ambushed and voted down on tipping fee issues early on. Uh, I'm going to bring it back up Tuesday night. I'm going to do a floor amendment to do that, and I'll tell you why. There's a building downtown, the Jake Godbold building. Some of you may be aware of it. Currently, we owe $14 million on the building. It is financed by the Police and Fire Pension Fund at a rate of about 12%. We have, we have, oh, it's, it's better. We have windows every four years when we can buy the building. If we don't buy the building, it goes, continues on, and we're paying over a million dollars, I think it's $1.6 million a year in, in payments. Um, in addition to that, the price goes up. If we don't, this next window is this May, and if we don't buy it at that point, then four years hence, the price will be about one and a half million dollars more. In other words, all the payments that we make that four years 
none of it applies to the principle, to the balance of it. My reasoning was, look, guys, we've got some other issues. This windfall that we've gotten, I'm all for downtown. It's a wonderful thing. But this windfall that we've gotten, we need to hold back and make a decision, a prudent decision, looking at a number of things like that, of how we spend our money. Now, maybe we put $4 million to downtown and we take some of that remaining money and put it to the pay off Godwell building and combine that with a little bit of debt from the banking fund to pay the balance of it. But somehow we've got to get out from underneath that. That's a bad deal. Did you see anything about it in the media? That's, that's, that's the, the most frustrating thing for me, honestly, sitting on that council. The very, there are a lot of frustrating things. But the very most frustrating thing to me is the fact that y'all don't, don't get informed. You really do not get informed. The, the, the things that they consider to be, they mean the media to be, to be uh, uh, important to me are not significant. The things that are really important don't get reported. And it's a sad, sad statement to how people define whether we do a good job or not. It's all sensationalism. It's all, you know, about issues that stir the blood and not necessarily reflect fiscal responsibility. And, and so that I just wanted to make you aware of that. There are a couple things that I'm going to do with respect to uh, once I'm president. I'm going to create a task force. It will exist for the full year probably or nearly the full year of my term. And that, that task force is going to study the structure of government. In October 1st, 1968, there were two great events that took place. Number one, my first son was born, and number two, consolidation started on that day. And we haven't taken a real serious look at the structure, of, not only the structure of the government with respect to the operation of the combined city-county consolidated government, but also these independent authorities. And I think we need to take an in-depth look. I've talked to the president of the Civic Council about it, and I'm sure the chamber will get behind it, but I think we need to take a really hard in-depth look at the structure and the efficiency or the lack thereof of our, of our government. Because maybe there are things, and this is not a negative, it's not a condemnation of consolidation, it's simply a matter of everybody, any prudent businessman always is continually looking at the operation and the efficiency and the structure of his or her business because things change, times change. And, and, and so we need to look at that and come back with some strong suggestions, recommendations, and actions to make it better. And I think there are ways we can make it better. And included in that needs to be a discussion about our relationship with the beaches as a county government. And that hasn't been addressed very well either. It's been band-aided and passed for years. And anybody that's been close to it knows that that's always been the case. It never gets addressed in a positive way. It only gets addressed when there's a contentious issue. And when there's a righteous issue, then we all start talking about the relationship. And after that goes away, everybody goes back to sleep. So we need to take a real hard look at that. And it goes into things such as procurement. Now, right now, I'm, I'm going I'm to introduce legislation probably next week about, about uh, renewing contracts. We, um, I think we're getting really habitual about this contract renewal thing because probably it's real easy and convenient for procurement to just renew that contract for the next year. Uh, case in point, uh, there's a copier contract that they opted to just renew. It's about, I understand it's a five or six million dollar a year contract, so it's a significant amount of money. Uh, you know, I'd like to be able to compare that to a bid because business right now is pretty tough. And I bet you we get a better we get a better bid. As a matter of fact, somebody in that industry speculated we might get about a half million dollar better bid. So, but why not make your decision to renew meaningful by being able to compare it to something else? Namely, what would the other people in the market do to replace that business? So I may get some resistance. I'm sure I'll get resistance from procurement from the administration about that. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't get that through the council and make them force them to. To act responsibly on behalf of citizens in the community. And there, are other, there, there are other things that are significant problems in the area of procurement, both with the city and with the JEA. And the independent authorities, folks, I believe, have some serious, serious problems. We have, if you look, and, and I've had the good fortune of being on the Finance Committee the last two years going through the budget process, um, JTA is, is, is pretty flawed. Uh, I, I think Mr. Ford is, is a great guy, and Brett, you all, many of you have heard him speak 
come speak here. He's a breath of fresh air. He has a monumental task to turn that thing around. Um, they have the most, they in the past, demonstrated by some comparative numbers that we got, they have the most inefficient, most expensive bus service, at least in Southeast, maybe the country, if you, if you get into comparison. Uh, the Port Authority, anybody that buys $12 million worth of waterfront property in Mayport that now, according to appraisal, is worth less than four for a single purpose that you never ask the cruise ship companies if they give you more than a two-year guarantee uh, to, to stay there and, and, and wondering what you would do with the property if they wouldn't give that guarantee makes you wonder about the, the prudence and the decision-making ability of, of the Port Authority. And I'm wondering if all of this, and JDA, they've had their share of problems too. I could, I could talk to you about JDA procurement, some specific things I've challenged them on, and talking to contractor friends and, and, as to their bidding, bidding process. I'll give you one example. They pre-qualify. There's nothing wrong with that. But they pre-qualify to the extent that they get absurd. Um, they came out with a spec on installing PVC pipe. Everybody knows what PVC pipe is. Well, this spec said that they were, they were coming out with kind of a unique, or putting in a, a kind of a unique size. It was 48-inch PVC pipe. And that's not the norm. Normally, you'll see 24-inch for the particular application. For some reason, they were in 48. In the bid document, they said they would, in order to be able to bid, you had to, have dem you had to demonstrate that you had put 48-inch PVC pipe in the ground on a job in the last two years. Well, folks, let me tell you, the difference between joining up to 24 inches and 48 inches of pipes, everybody in this room could get together, we could do it, I guarantee you. Finally, after much argument, the contractors got a, an attorney and threatened suit, and finally the JEA backed off the position. And, here's, and there's another one out now in 20,000 feet of some, some kind of pipe that they're saying, you haven't put that much in the ground in the last two years, you can't bid. Uh, the, the problem I have with that is pre-qualifications are fine, but what in the heck is a performance bond for? We're protected. If we say that we give you specifications and you bid the job and there's a scope of work, you're going to be held accountable, and if you're not, if you walk, then you're bonding. The bonding company's obligated to step in and finish that, hire a contract and finish that work off. It's not like JEA or the city or anybody else isn't protected. So they're using this, I believe, as a weapon. And you know what happens when you do that? Let me tell you what happens. Prices go up. You not only get a bad reputation in that you're difficult to deal with and we don't want to bid it, so you have less bidders, but if you pre qualify to the extent that you knock a bunch of other bidders out, then you're only going to get two or three bids where you should be getting 10, especially in this environment where everybody is struggling and everybody wants to bid on work. Those are the kind of things that we've got to find some resolution to for the benefit of the community as a whole. And it's very, very important to me. So, I am open for questions. We're going to all watch the Gators win the SEC at 8 o'clock, so we're out of here in 10 minutes of May, right? Hey! This is your mayor. Uh, so in Mayport, it uh, was just announced that the, the Pack family, the son in law, is going to open the new restaurant. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be a big plus. Yeah, it's sure a is. Large, large facility. And uh, it closed the little bitty bitty thing there at Safe Harbor. But uh, that's another plus moving in the right direction. You know, if you, um, and, and we, are, we do need the CRA because that would help, help spur some development if we can get our hands on that waterfront property um, and some other properties around in, in, in the adjacent area. What, what I think you would see, it, and it really needs to be a working waterfront, yeah. It's, it's part domain. of the charm. No, I'm in a domain, though. Well, you know, I asked that question, Mike. I said, could a, could a, could a city use eminent domain to take property away from an independent authority. Well, and, and, and what's really good about it is we could take it away from them for less than $4 million. Because <laughs> the appraised value isn't real good right now. That's right. Anyway, Maria. Uh, Bill, what's the um, progress as far as lay rate being considered as a I don't know. We signed a letter for him, but... Yeah, they got it outside. I don't know. I, and there's mixed feelings about it. I love Blake. I think he's a great guy. I, I think you could argue both sides of it. And I signed a letter for him. I think you could argue both sides of his, um, his assuming that. I don't know why he'd want it, frankly, because it's a mess over there. But um, it, 
I know technically he's fine, he's good. What we really need, I think, for the JEA is somebody who is really strong operationally. Uh, that, that's what, huh? JPA. Yeah. You said JPA. Port Authority. I'm sorry, Port Authority. Um, but we need an operational guy. And, and forget about all the fluff. And we haven't had an operational guy really in some time. If you look at the background of the last several. So if you get somebody in there that pays attention to, to maintenance, really gets the thing operating properly, then I think that makes a big step to, and doesn't do stupid things. Uh, there are a lot of stupid things over there right now that people are not aware of. Oh, yes sir, Mr. Buck. I'll tell you, one thing, I don't know whether this is proper terminology, but I thank the good Lord that uh, you decided to run because uh, I, I appreciate that. You, you actually have saved the beaches. Nah. Almost, but I do have something else to say. Going back to the courthouse, and not the new one, but I can remember when they built that. My dad said, "What in the world are we doing putting a courthouse on a riverfront?" But anyway, uh, the reason I raised my hand on downtown, you know the, you, you know, you explained some of the things. But when you go to some of these cities like Denver and whatnot that have really developed a downtown strip. Uh, I just see Bay Street potentially someday, or, uh, you know, I, I can just see downtown Jacksonville, uh, and I'm not saying that nine million ought to be put there, but in the long run, don't you see a lot of potential there? Oh, very much so. I'll tell you what's going on right now that's kind of interesting or intriguing to me is that uh, there's a there's an entertainment center that's sort of uh, growing along Bay Street over behind the Florida Theater, and of course you got the Boswick Building there that I think is going to be sold and I think it's going to be renovated. That's going to get resolved. There's an alley back behind the Florida Theater that there's talk about turning that into the alley and making it a happening spot. It's really a neat plan. And then if you comp you know it would be a place. For a little restaurant, uh, a place to sit and have drinks and this kind of stuff, and it would be right adjacent to the Florida Theater, so you could go there after or before. Um, I've been talking to the new president of the Florida Theater, the corporation. Um, I would really like, and he and I have been seeing how we could change the leases. They currently lease the, 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 the top floor of the office building, Florida Theater office building. I don't know if you all know that they're seven floors of office space in the Florida Theater that right now, except for the seventh floor, is all empty. And my thought was, and he's agreeable, is, look, let's, let's get arts groups in there, let's get nonprofits in there. If we subsidize the, the cost or we lease it for a buck a year at first, or we make them responsible for the maintenance and repair <coughs> and the utilities, but we try and attract artists and all kinds of interesting people there to get a certain dynamic going, and and that would be a, that would be a, a draw. I, I think there I think there's several components. This isn't all about throwing money in it. My gosh, we've thrown money in downtown for years, and it didn't do a whole lot of good. Some good, but not. But but I think the components of a, a vibrant downtown is that first of all you got to have residential, and I think the residential has to be widespread in terms of the type of residential. I think you got to have. You can't just have Berkman Plaza. You got to have. Uh, housing that will attract young families because of price and the, and the nature of it with pocket parks and, and just something that really, really is good for a young family with kids that wants an urban setting that works and then in between and then the Berkman Plazas and beyond maybe along the riverfront. Um, I think that you have to have, you then will attract stores and shops. The biggest problem that I think right now we have is our vagrant problem. And, our, and I wouldn't even say homeless because I, I think it's not all homeless. It's, uh, there's a certain group of people that come down there and hang out every single day and they have somewhere to sleep. They have a house, but that's their hangout spot. A lot of it's around Union Plaza. And because of the panhandling, because of the vacancy, because of the in-your-face that takes place with, with some of them, much like what they're talking about in Jacksonville Beach, you have a perception that it's an unsafe place. And I went and 
as I said, mentioned, I met with the city council president uh, in the last several days. And we talked about downtown, and I said that. And I don't know that he was all that on board with what I said. And he said, uh, but I do agree that I was down there, and some guy came along and urinated on the tire of my car. He said, I was a little put off by that. I said, if you're a little put off by that, how do you think a woman feels about it? And, and that's the problem. See, it's not necessarily, believe it or not, statistically, it's the safest place in Jacksonville. But the statistics don't pick up confrontation between a pan, an aggressive panhandler and Maria Marks at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which turns her off immediately if that happens. So or why, any why, do we, why do we tolerate that? Well, you know, the, 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 we don't talk, the, the unfortunate part is, we are so governed and hogtied by some of the laws that we have on the books so about uh, this freedom of this and freedom of that. I, I think that we're going to have to get more aggressive, and I think we can get more aggressive, and I'm going to advocate that. But I agree with you. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think the other thing that happens, too, is sort of chicken and egg. If you have a more vibrant downtown, then they're less noticeable, too. If Hemi Park was full of people watching some kind of lunchtime performance, then those folks that are in there that are described as vagrant or whatever, homeless, are going to be less obtrusive, less noticeable, and maybe a little less aggressive. And but there's the uh, art walk down there. Yeah, art walk does it pretty well. Don't know what's going to do with them. Huh? Well, we don't even recognize it because it's active people in the Yeah, well, that's because all the homeless people go over to the salt fiber, et cetera, for dinner during the art walk. So you, you know. <laughs> You're not going to have homeless people in Hemi Plaza much to speak of but during that during that time. Because they, they got eat dinner. That, that really That's right. Part part of our problem too is the location of, of some of the homeless service areas or facilities downtown. Really. The mayor was going to set. He was going to. Yeah, but that ain't going to that the daycare thing. And yeah, that's right. not that. And, and, and that's a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I could speak for hours of problems on the Plaza. Yeah, I know. But you could. You have a first-hand experience, yes, I you. But can anything good happen downtown if they don't get the jail out of there? Well, that's another thing. You're absolutely right. That's another problem. That would, you know, Lee. If I had a choice between building the courthouse on the river versus building the jail where it is, and I could, if I could remove one of them. The jail would be the one that would get out of there. It's a horrible location. It is. The, the, jail, the jail feeds the homeless. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I know. And, and then you got Soul Fighter Center right, right there. It's, it's yeah. a, you know, it's kind of a triumph. Right. 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 That's where they go. They, exactly. The jail, they go to Soul Fighter. And, go, and as far as aggressiveness, and just like what you're saying, you know, our police officers throw them in jail. Yeah. It's, it's one or two uh, nights uh, a hot with a cot. And then they're back out and they're over at Salzbacher Center. Believe it or not, the other thing that's happened too is we have attracted, because of our service level, we have attracted people from outside the area. That's another problem we've got. We're so doggone good that they, hey, come on down. Somebody told me, and I, I understand there was a copy of it said here, that someone ran an ad in the West Palm Beach paper that said, go to Jacksonville, they got great <laughs> programs, great service. So there's a move of foot that I can't divulge that might address some of that problem that might reduce our population a little bit. I think the sheriff, sheriff's idea is absolutely spot on, but I don't know where the money's going to come from. But, well, he says set up a facility out, well outside of town and give them all kinds of services and do things salt boxes do it, et cetera. And, you know, instead of throwing them in jail, we cart them out to that center. And, and if they want to come back to Jacksonville, then they've got a long walk. Cecil's a long walk. Right? Yes, it is. Well, that's one of them. Yes, ma'am. This is not my question. I just, are you aware of what's going on in Riverside? As far as? It's amazing. It's I didn't amazing. the movement that's going on in, in the gentrification of Riverside. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, there are people, now I'm from that area. I go, I go there once a week to where the River King is on Downing Street. Mm -hmm. You know, King Street, which has been... Again, that's my family. I've been home there for 65 years. King Street, which is by the Park and King, I don't know if you know, Post and King uh, liquor store. I haven't seen that since the 50s, 60s. It's all up and coming. And they're actually, young people are buying homes on the other side of King Street toward the railroad track where there's two breweries. It's amazing the gentrification and prices have gone through the roof of little bungalows just in the last year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. and, and 
So if, if, if and that is what's that is. I used to walk downtown. I used to walk to the Sears building, but that's not my question. I was just I'm proud of Riverside. I've always loved Riverside. Were you looking at my socks, then? I would have never. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, you got a 
question for you. We've got a lot of citizens at the beaches that, that work, uh, volunteer work with, um, with the um, uh, elections office. And I've taken some of, the, some of my elderly friends down to Yay Bay, and I have been so concerned about them that I have walked them in that building, and I have made sure they got upstairs. It is unsafe, in my opinion, and I'm just, I know that Jerry was looking at possibly moving them or what, do you know what's going on with, with the... Uh, it ain't going to move. Um, as much as I agree, I, I think it's ideal to sound to combine the two offices and build something that's suitable. It's not very functional. Remember, I spent, I was on the canvassing board the last election, lucky me, and I spent a lot of time in the gateway. And I, it's a horrible place. Now they've come back, they've, they've cut their lease in half, roughly, and they've said they're going to make $400,000 worth of improvements for his office down there, etc. I think we're stuck there. I think politically you can't get out of that because it's probably the most economical thing we can do for the short term. Um, so I, I agree with you though, Harry. It's not a, I'll say. No, it's not a great place to have it. Yes, sir, Jonathan? Um, Land Beach has a new geographical feature in it that we have really utilized our marsh parks, yeah. Staten Island, Tide Beach, et cetera. And I've done some informal surveys on that because I don't want to about fishing. Most of the people I talk to come from Neptune Beach, Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, I mean, just all over the place. Uh, rarely do I ever meet somebody on the beach. Is there any way that we can get participation uh, in ways that we can participate at the beach from our county government? Define participation. Are you talking about money? <laughs> let's, get, let's cut to the quick here. Are you yeah. talking about bucks, Jonathan? Yeah, money. M money. Um, try and get it. The, the best time to do it is try and get it to the budget. I mean, I've got, if you if you will get in touch with me, come up with you know, a, a, an amount that you would like to see that we're trying to run through Parks and Rec next budget. I don't know if we'll make it, but we'll give it a whirl. Because you're not talking about a significant amount of money anyway. That's a couple million. That's not, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> Mike? That's a good idea, guys. One thing to think outside the square on the, the jail and uh, location and the cost of running a jail. Look at the sheriff in Arizona who charges to the people there. <laughs> and he's bare bones. Oh, I mean, it, it, everybody chuckles about it. But damn it, it works. And uh, it, uh, you want to reverse the cycle where people don't want to go to jail? Yeah. But here, here's the only problem. But there, there, all of you, I want all of you to understand one thing that you can take away from here. I want you to think about this stuff. We have very little control over the budgets of constitutional officers, including the sheriff is the, of course, the largest budget. The sheriff knows very well, and he's a great guy, I like him very much, um, and he's very dedicated and a very honest and honorable man. But he also has a little political streak, and he can play the politics as well as anybody. And when we get to the point where we're approving a budget and the citizens are screaming, you're forcing him to cut 40 officers or 50 or 100 officers, we're not forcing him to do anything. We have no control over the line items in his budget. We, uh, we do control the overall amount, the total amount, but he has control. We don't know what he's really doing with that money because that's a huge budget. And the same thing with, you know, he controls the jails, jail too. I like your idea. I don't know whether he's of the same ilk, but I like your idea, but we, we don't exercise as much control as you might think of. You don't have any control over him. No, not, not, not really. And that's not crazy about Well, the, the, thing, the thing is that brings up the debate, and that, that will be a debate probably in this task force is should we have an, an appointed sheriff or should we have an elected sheriff? And I've heard both sides of that, of that issue and that argument. You, you will politicize it if you appoint that person. So, but, but by the same token, Maybe that's the right way to do it. Somebody said, you realize now under our under the charter, because we're at the consolidation, we could make him solely the solely responsible for the jails, and we could hire a police chief. You know that? The run the policing side of it? All I know is that we have no say over what Rutherford does. Rutherford does whatever he wants. That's the structure. Yeah, you, know, you got a problem. I, uh, we all have a problem, but that's I got a problem with a lot of things, but I can't necessarily change it. And that's the structure under the under the under the charter.
hard or that, that, that we work on. So, anyone else? We got uh, 10 minutes to get on watch Gators. Sally. My question is simple. You mentioned streamlining the recycling. Mm -hmm. I've been separating my glass from my papers for years. It sounds like I can just throw it all in one bin. You're going to throw it all in one bin, Sally. Like Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, you're going to just throw it all in one bin and forget about it. And then you don't have to make any decisions. All you've got to decide is, and you can even do it wet and dry. Everything wet goes in the little container, everything dry goes in the big container. Because that's fundamental. You talk about, mainly about food waste. And, and actually, if you, if you grind it up, you know, the, the, then you're looking at very minimal amounts of food waste that would go to the landfill. Most of it would go in the other container. All plastic. Don't have to differentiate plastics anymore. I'm going to start tomorrow. Yeah. Don't take Sorry, yeah, you put everything in there. It's dry. That goes in there, too. They recycle. This facility, let me tell you something, folks. This is, I, I went on the tour of this facility the Republic has. It is the most sophisticated facility for recycling what, uh, east of the Rockies. It is an incredible thing. If you get a chance and you want to go out there, call me or call Stan, and I can set it up for you. It's out on um, Pritchard Road. See. I can remember back when on Hemingway that our beautiful people played checkers and for the Georgia Florida game the Florida Gators got in the middle of that square yeah. and did their thing and I'm going to go see the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got one question in the back. Uh, yes ma'am. We're working on that's a, we brought that up in that in that solid waste. That's a huge opportunity for more recycling. You're absolutely right, and we are going to look at that. What we hope to do with that solid waste committee is to come out with recommendations for legislation uh, to to do some of the things, some additional things that we want to see done. Right now, right now we're losing a tremendous amount of revenue, leaving the county of C and D uh, construction and demolition debris. Uh, we. It's leaving the county. We charge a host fee when it gets dumped in a landfill or goes to the C&D recycling centers or facilities, the, the MERS. Um, we're, that's going away, and we'd like to capture that. Um, there, there are a number of things, but that's a big issue that's been discussed. We have a list that we're starting on how we do these things. We've got a list of about 14, 15 items, that, uh, and that's one of the items of what do we do to, to, to accomplish this. So that's beyond. Sir. Can I ask you a question about Panman Road, because that's where I live. Right. And uh, I know that it's a, supposed to be maintained by the city. Absolutely. And it does, they don't seem to be doing a very good job of that. I mean, it seems like we have a constant issue with the, being able to grow weeds in the right of way. And, you know, it just, it, it just doesn't seem to be maintained very well. What does it take to get those folks to come over call. the side of the ditch to take care of it? Call. Uh, call. My office, and we'll get. I'll get after the problems in the. Okay. And one other question. Specifics. Tell Stan. Stan's the my assistant. Okay. And call Stan and, and tell him what where where the specific problems are. And we can have. Okay. And, the, and the original interlocal agreement that was supposed to be four lane at one time, and I know that through the years they've kind of pivoted that, and they finally went to a three lane. Is there any uh, plans on the board to maybe put a bicycle lane? No, but that's something that if you're over to another topic, and I'll just end with this real quickly. We have an issue coming up that will be pretty strong. I'm going to be on opposite sides with the mayor, and that's uh, that's the issue of extending the gas tax, local option gas tax. Six cents. Uh, I don't see how we can not do it. I think what it will precipitate is not only bad or, or lacking of infrastructure, but I think it will increase more debt because we'll play little games instead of using that tax revenue to do some of the things that we need to do, we will borrow the money to do it. In a classic example, and that is Herschel. Herschel is a street that has an old bridge that was built in the 30s. It's really a combination box culvert bridge that was close to collapse last year. And so we had to go in there and make emergency repairs on it to the tune of $387,000, which we, I think it was $387,000, which we passed and financed and subsequently in the council. Uh, that money was borrowed from the banking fund to do that, whereas it should have come out of gas tax money. Now, my feeling is if we're going to go and extend that gas tax, I want to have a serious conversation with JTA about, and they want it to be extended, 
about part of that money staying with the city because what we did was we abrogated that entire revenue stream and gave it all to the JTA. And that has been set, that was set up years ago by the state legislature as a restricted source dedicated to maintaining and repairing and improving roads, streets, and drainage. And we have just given it all to them and therefore we don't have a dedicated source other than the general fund or borrowing money to do bike paths and the things that you're, and even maintenance, the things that you're talking about. And so part of that money needs to stay in, in the negotiation. The mayor will veto it. We will try and override his veto. That's going to be something that we will do in the next, uh, in, uh, in my time, uh, because I think it's very important. The other thing, lastly, is this. Gas tax, it, when you really think about it, all those people that live in the surrounding counties that come into Jacksonville to work, they make no real contribution to, to, the, to the county, except when they fill their gas tank up. Then they're making a contribution, aren't they? And those snowbirds that just drive through, they make a contribution too. Gas tax really, when you get right down to it, is about the best form of tax that I can think of. Not only taxes, but at least we're kind of spreading the agony amongst those that don't even live here. So, that's going to be an issue. Hey, listen, four minutes till tip-off. It's been a really nice thing. <laughs>